The scale and devastating consequences of the Chernobyl catastrophe we realized only with time. Even the conclusions reached by Anatoly Petrovich Alexandrov, the creator of the RBMK, Academy of Sciences of the USSR, turned out to be devastating. He who used to assert that a nuclear reactor was so safe that it could be placed even on the Red Square was deeply shocked by what had happened. But a similar accident had almost happened 11 years earlier near Leningrad. In those years it was classified, not a single mass media outlet in the USSR told about it. What's more, even the residents of Sosnovy Bor, where the plant is located, had no idea what had happened. Although the radiation background on the city streets was exceeded a thousandfold or even more. Today we publish information about what happened 40 years ago at the Leningrad nuclear power plant. Material is based on recollections of contemporaries and documents in the public domain. We do not name the names of the shift personnel for ethical reasons. The dosimeters of our neighbors went off the scale. In the morning of November 30, 1975 the person on duty at LNPP received a call from a neighboring research technological institute, are you okay? Our dosimeters are off the scale. But all is clear on the territory of the institute. Most likely, it's something at your place. This is how the needy, Alexandrov Scientific Research Institute, located 3 kilometers from LNPP Unit 1, reacted to an aerosol release carried by air currents from the side of the plant. This was the first signal of an accident detected outside the area of the plant. According to Vitaly Abakumov, who took part in the shift as a reactor control engineer, at 6.33 a.m. on November 30 there were several emergency signals that indicated the failure of integrity of process channels. This is the time of the accident. More than 200 norms. But the information about the accident was immediately classified. Neither the country, nor the city, nor even plant employees knew about it. By that time I was working as a senior control engineer of the turbine units, says former LNPP employee Valerie Koptiev. On November 30th, my shift was off. When I came to the main control room on December 1st I saw my shift man Mikhail Kodayakov in a respirator. I already knew that the unit was stopped, but I had no idea what the reason was. Usually the management, from the director and chief engineer to the shop managers and their deputies, came to our morning briefing in suits, ties, and regular shoes. That day I saw the management in white overalls and special boots. I asked Mikhail, why are you wearing a respirator, what is the level of aerosols in the air? I don't know exactly, but more than 200 norms, the dosimetrist said, he answered. Then we found out how much dirt had been dispersed not only through the station, but also through the city. A mistake by the personnel. So what happened back in 1975? Vitaly Abakumov tells about it in detail. On the night of November 30th, one of the two operating turbine generators was to be unloaded and taken out for repair. The operators unloaded the necessary generator. But by mistake, instead of the unloaded one, they disconnected the working generator from the grid. This triggered the emergency protection and shut down the reactor. Realizing that the personnel had made a mistake, the station shift supervisor gave a command to start up the erroneously disconnected TG as soon as possible, Abakumov recalls. The entire preparation for turning on and taking the load on the TG took place in a nervous situation, against the real threat of unacceptable poisoning of the reactor, getting into the iodine pit and subsequent prolonged downtime of the unit. To accelerate the reactor, the operators had to remove almost all the control rods from the reactor. And bringing the reactor to the minimum controllable power level became a dangerous and complicated task for the senior reactor control engineer, SRCE, forbidden by the process regulations. However, the shift supervisor and the SRCE did not hesitate to go along with the violation. They sought to compensate for the consequences of the operator's error, 
because the main indicator at the time was the power generation plan. Reactor downtime means lost megawatt hours. Violations of regulations were never welcome. But at the same time, they were not perceived as dangerous in those days. Therefore, violations of the lower regulated limit of the value of the Operational Reactivity Reserve ORR, were a common practice at LNPP and were tacitly perceived as evidence of special mastery of the Siru, Abakumov writes. The RBMK reactor is large not only in terms of its design parameters, but also in terms of reactor physics, which means it is possible to achieve criticality not only for the reactor in general, but also in local areas of the reactor core, Abakumov continues. With a total poisoning of the reactor core and the practical absence of means to influence reactivity, all control rods were removed, the senior engineer managed to bring the reactor to a minimally controlled level not as a whole, but only to a limited area adjacent to the fuel channel 13 to 33. Outside this area, the core remained poisoned. Further fast energy loading of this local region led to overheating and mass destruction of fuel element cladding, fuel rods. The destruction of fuel assemblies due to their melting is called goat in professional nuclear slang. Abakumov recalls that when the alarm went off, the reaction of the chief engineer was immediate, shut down the reactor. And the reactor was shut down with the AZ, emergency protection button, without hesitation or doubt. The physics of the reactor saved the day. The Leningrad Chernobyl could very well have taken place at LNPP Unit 1 after the AZ button had been pressed, dropping all control rods into the reactor core to silence the reactor, believes Vitaly Abakumov. Just like it happened at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, where the operating staff made a similar decision. The situation was saved not by the actions of the plant operators, but by the physics of the reactor. The fact is that the Lasov reactor was significantly fresher than the Chernobyl reactor in terms of the average burnup of fuel in the core. Many years later on a site of the Ministry of Emergency the Russian Federation there will appear an article accident at Unit 1 of Leningrad Nuclear Power Plant, USSR, connected with destruction of a technological channel, completing with the following conclusion, unfortunately, the operating staff was not duly informed, best of all on an example of an accident of November 30, 75 on Leningrad NPP, of a dangerous combination of high burnout plus low OPCR plus low power, which resulted in an accident in 1986 at CHNPP. The Glowing City As a result of the cessation of heat removal from the process channel, the fuel assembly, there are 1693 such assemblies in the RBMK-1000 reactor, was destroyed. Uranium fission products, CS-137, CS-134, SU-144, Senior-90, and so on, and transuranic elements, PU-238, PU-239, AM-241 and others, were in the graphite stack of the reactor. The accidental release of radioactivity into the atmosphere lasted for a month. According to various estimates, 137,000 to 1.5 million key of radioactive substances were released into the environment. Tons of liquid radioactive waste were dumped into the Baltic Sea. For comparison, during the Chernobyl accident 50 million curies were released into the environment. Immediately after the accident, the radiation background in Sosnovy bore ranged from 650 micro-rentgen to several rentgen per hour, different sources indicate. It turns out the city was literally glowing. Increase of radiation background was registered in Finland. Residents of Sosnovy bore and the Baltic states who were exposed to radiation were not notified of the danger. Of course, we were unusually lucky to get away with a minor scare in 1975. Although it is quite possible that for someone the Chernobyl of Leningrad turned out to be fatal. And perhaps the accident that happened 47 years ago continues to collect new victims because the half-life of transuranic elements is tens of thousands of years. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up.
Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.